today we are going to investigate the family of parrots known as Strigopidae, or the New Zealand parrots. Birds come in all shapes and sizes, but parrots are perhaps one of the most beloved. They are well known for their colourful plumage, high intelligence, and the ability to mimic human words. Many species are kept as household pets, or in zoos and private animal collections around the world. They are found mostly in tropical or subtropical regions, although today we will be looking at some of the exceptions to this rule. Parrots are distinguished from other birds by their curved bill, upright stance, strong legs and clawed zygodactyl feet. Zygodactyl is the technical term to describe the way that their toes point. It means that they have two toes facing forwards and two backwards. This is seen in strongly arboreal species, as zygodactyl feet help with gripping and climbing trees. Parrots share this feature with woodpeckers, cuckoos and some owls. Outside of birds it is only seen in chameleons. Parrots have the most variable length between species of all birds. The smallest is the buff-faced pygmy parrot from Papua New Guinea, and they are only 8.6 centimetres tall, or about 3.4 inches. Compare this to the hyacinth macaw from South America, which is 1 metre, or 3 foot 3 inches long. Parrots are the only species to display true tripedalism, that is, using three limbs to move around. In addition to their legs, parrots will use their beak as a third limb to help pull themselves up when climbing. They typically eat fruit, seeds and nuts, although some are specialised for feeding on nectar and a few will eat carrion. Most species are brightly coloured, but there is usually no difference between males and females. As was mentioned earlier, parrots are known for their intelligence, which rivals that of crows, ravens and magpies. Many species can mimic human speech, and some grey parrots have even been shown to do more than mimic. They can be taught the meanings of a few words and can use this to string together simple sentences. A few species have been observed using complex tools, a trait most famously associated with primates, but can also be seen in corvids and octopi. This is another sign of a highly intelligent animal. Parrots are very desirable in the pet trade, partly for their bright plumage and partly for the ability to mimic human speech. This is also unfortunately one of the reasons many species are endangered in the wild. The other large threat to many parrot species is habitat loss, as the forests they rely on are logged for timber or cleared for farming. Parrots are all in the order Cytisiformes, which has four families. If we look at the phylogeny of parrots, we start with the New Zealand parrots and the family Strigopidae. They are the most distantly related of all parrots. Their ancient ancestors would have been separated from other parrots around 80 million years ago, when New Zealand split off from the rest of Gondwana land. This is the smallest family of parrots with only three living species. As their common name suggests, they are all endemic to the islands of New Zealand. Despite being known as the New Zealand parrots, there are other parrots endemic to New Zealand. New Zealand is home to several species of parakeet, but these are in a different family, and so are only distantly related to the New Zealand parrots. This group may be the focus of this video, but let's have a quick look at the other families of parrot first. The next family of parrot is Kakatuidae, or the cockatoos. They likely diverged from true parrots around 33 million years ago, so are not quite as distant as the New Zealand parrots, but are not as close as the last two families we will be covering. These parrots are found mostly in Australasia, whether on mainland Australia, or on surrounding island nations such as the Philippines, Indonesia, or New Guinea. There are 21 species of cockatoo, so while more numerous than the New Zealand parrots, there are still not that many. Cockatoos are particularly known for having distinctive crests on their head, making them easy to tell apart from other parrots. These crests are often large and colourful, and the classic example is the sulphur-crested cockatoo with its white body and distinctive yellow crest. The last two families are closely related to each other, and so are placed together into the superfamily Cytacoidea, or the true parrots. The first of these families is Cytacidae, and it contains the African and New World parrots. When talking about parrots, this is probably the first group you immediately think of. It contains the macaws, parrots and parakeets from Central and South America, along with several species in Africa. Whether it is the scarlet macaw's beautiful plumage, or the grey parrot's ability to talk, it is likely a member of this family that first comes to mind when thinking of parrots. This is not actually the largest family of parrots, but it is close with 181 species. The last family is also the largest, with 204 species. Cyticulidae, or the Old World parrots, are found mostly in Australia and Asia with a couple of Madagascar. This family includes lorikeets, lovebirds, and the budgerigar, or budgie. Alright, so with the different parrot families covered, let's get back to the New Zealand parrots. What separates Strigopidae from the other parrot families? 
The exact placement of the New Zealand parrots was a topic of debate for many years, as, until recently, they had been included with the true parrots. The problem with deciding on how groups of parrots should be related to each other is that they all share similar features, a strong, hooked bill, strong talons, and similar behaviours and feeding habits. Just based on these things, the New Zealand parrots, while having some differences from those found overseas, are close enough that it is hard to tell them apart. The advent of genetic analysis has really shaken up our traditional views on many animal relationships, and this is also true for parrots. Because of their genetics, the New Zealand parrots were deemed to be different enough from other families to be separated. There has also been some debate about whether the New Zealand parrots should be split into two families, with the kakapo in a different family to the rest of them. This has not been widely accepted, so most sources still list New Zealand parrots in a single family, and this is the structure I'm going to follow today. We might as well start with the kakapo, since it has been singled out in the phylogeny. Whether it should be in a separate family or not, it is still the least related to the other birds in this family. It is the only member of its genus Strigops. This name is derived from the ancient Greek words for owl and face, due to the flat, owl-like appearance of the kakapo's face. The kakapo is generally known by its Tereo Māori name, which translates to Parrot of the Night. It was given the English name of Owl Parrot by early European settlers, but this has fallen out of use. Its scientific name is Strigops habroptila. Habroptila comes from Latin and means soft feather. Kakapo are one of the most unique animals in New Zealand, which is saying a lot given that those islands also home to Kiwi and Tuatara. The kakapo is the record holder for many categories when compared to other parrots. Firstly, it is the world's only nocturnal parrot, which is another reason many of their names reference owls in night time. Next, it is the world's only flightless parrot. They are able to climb trees with their sharp claws, but they are unable to truly fly. A common myth is that they can glide, but this is false. They can, however, use their wings to assist with jumping to go short distances, but this is more of a way to fall with style than truly glide or fly. It might have been a technique to avoid predation when in trees, although today it is mainly observed when researchers are attempting to recapture them. It is the world's heaviest parrot, weighing in at up to 4 kilograms or 8.8 pounds. This makes some sense given that they cannot fly. Most birds need to be as light as possible for flight, but flightless species often become much heavier because they don't have the same restrictions. And finally, it is at least in the running for the longest lived of any bird, with some individuals still in good health as they're near 100 years old. This one is tricky to prove, as it is difficult to work out how old kakapo are when they were caught in the wild, before they became carefully managed by New Zealand's Department of Conservation. One was caught in 1975 and was still alive and well in 2005. This individual has been speculated to have been around 40 or 50 years old when it was caught, but again, it is difficult to know. Kakapo look very different from most parrots. Most of their body is a mossy green colour mottled with black or dark grey, which provides good camouflage in New Zealand's forests. Their belly, neck and face are a yellowish colour, and some of their features stem directly from being flightless. Their feathers are soft, as suggested by their scientific name, as they don't need to be stiff to aid with flying. They also lack a keel on their breastbone, which is the structure that the flying muscles of other birds are attached to. It has a facial disc, resembling that of an owl, as many of its names suggest. It also has delicate feathers resembling whiskers around its beak, although the purpose of these is unknown. Kakapo have a great sense of smell, which is useful due to it being nocturnal. It can tell apart different smells when foraging for food, which is a behaviour only observed in one other parrot species, the chattering lorry from Indonesia. Kakapo are critically endangered and have been through a severe population bottleneck in the last few decades. In 1995, there were only 51 surviving kakapo in the world. The Kakapo Recovery Program has worked hard to ensure their survival ever since then. There were over 150 individuals in 2016, and 2019 is considered the best breeding season on record. As of 2020, the population was recorded at 210 individuals. This is encouraging, but the Kakapo is still very much a threatened species, and ongoing conservation efforts are required to ensure their survival. Kakapo are not found in any zoos or private collections. New Zealand uses offshore, predator-free islands for many endangered species, and the kakapo was one of the earliest and best studied examples of this. New Zealand has no native mammals, so introduced rats, stoats, cats and dogs, among other invasive species, have had a serious impact on many of New Zealand's native animals. The kakapo are particularly vulnerable to this. In addition to being flightless, their main defence against predators is to freeze and rely on their camouflage. This works well against avian predators like hawks that rely on sight. 
However, mammals use smell to hunt, so freezing just makes them an easy target. Today, kakapo are extinct on mainland New Zealand, but are found in carefully managed populations, the largest of which is on codfish island, Whenua Hole. After I'd finished recording and editing this video, some news about the kakapo came out that I wanted to include. As of July 2023, kakapo have been released on the New Zealand mainland, making it the first time in nearly 40 years kakapo have inhabited one of the main islands. Four male kakapo have been moved to Sanctuary Mountain Mongatatari, an ecological reserve protected by a predator-proof fence in the North Island of New Zealand. I will leave the full article linked in the description below. Finally, kakapo have one more world's only record title. They are the only parrot and the only flightless bird to have a lek mating system. This type of mating system is where males gather to call and display to attract a female. Kakapo males have a low frequency call called booming that they use during the breeding season. This breeding season can last for around three months over the New Zealand summer, generally from January to March. Kakapo do not breed every year and it is thought that breeding occurs in years where rimu trees produce high amounts of fruit which only happens once every two to four years. As you can imagine, this makes getting the numbers of kakapo to increase a little problematic. Moving on from the kakapo, let's look at the other birds in this family. The other genus with living species is Nestor. The word Nestor comes from Greek, meaning traveller. In Greek mythology, Nestor was a wise, elderly king who had many adventures in his youth, so the name is associated with wisdom, nobility, and travelling. The species in this genus are medium to large-sized parrots with short, squarish tails. Their defining characteristic is their tongue, which is covered in a hair-like fringe. This morphological feature made early researchers believe them to be closely related to lorikeets, which have a similar tongue. This is not the case, however, and the similarity is likely due to convergent evolution. This is a phenomenon where unrelated species will have similar features as they have a similar lifestyle. In this case, both lorikeets and parrots in the genus Nestor use their tongue to feed on nectar. There are four species in Nestor, but two of them are extinct. The living ones are the New Zealand kaka and the kea. The remaining ones are the Chatham and Norfolk carcas. The kea, or Nesta notabilis, is the world's only alpine parrot. Its scientific name comes from Latin, meaning notable or remarkable. Its common name comes from Māori, and was probably given because it sounds like they call when flying. It is only found in the Southern Alps, the mountain range that divides the eastern and western coasts of New Zealand's South Island, where they are found at altitudes from 300 metres above sea level, or 900 feet, to about 2,000 metres, or 6,000 feet. Historically, kea fossils have been found in lowland environments, so their current range is likely an indication of being driven out of the lowland forests and into the mountains by invasive pests or human activity. Kea are large parrots with olive green feathers on their back, wings and breast. They have distinctive orange feathers under their wings, which are most clearly seen when flying. The ring around their eye is grey, as is their legs and the sear around the base of the bill. They average 46 to 50 centimetres in length, or 18 to 20 inches. Although not as long-lived as the kakapo seems to be, the oldest known individual kia lived to 50 years old in captivity. It is unknown how long they survive in the wild. Kia are considered to be one of the most intelligent animals in the world. It is believed that they have the intelligence of a four-year-old human and can outperform apes in some intelligence-based tests. They have even been shown as able to consider the probability of various outcomes occurring and then reacting accordingly. Kia have been seen using tools to help overcome disabilities, Researchers have observed a kea with a broken beak selecting and using small stones to preen its feathers. Kea have also been observed using sticks to set off stoke traps. The camera even caught them selecting different sticks to test and whittling at them until they were the right size and then removing excess twigs and leaves from them just to set off the traps. Interestingly, the bait was often left behind, untouched by the kea. This makes the reason the kea enjoys setting off these traps a bit of a mystery, as the only other reward would be a very loud noise when the trap was triggered. Kia are very curious birds, likely due to their high intelligence. They are generally not afraid of humans and will curiously approach people and objects in their territory. They will fly away with lighter items and inspect larger items. They are known as the clown of the mountains for this behaviour and can be very destructive. Locals know them for picking out the rubber around car windows or damaging electrical wires on trailers. They will often approach humans to beg for food or just out of curiosity. Kia are omnivorous, eating a range of plants, insects, birds and mammals. Farmers used to shoot them on sight as it was believed that they attacked sheep. Some kia actually do attack sheep, but this depends on the individual, as not all do this. It is unknown why some do this, but others don't. In addition to this, kia will sometimes sit on the backs of sheep. 
When they do, the care's sharp talons digs through the animal's skin, leading to infection and possibly death. Because of this, the government placed a bounty on care in the late 1800s. By the time this was lifted in 1970, over 150,000 birds had been killed. Care became a protected species in 1986, and so today these behaviours are tolerated by farmers. At that time, it was estimated fewer than 5,000 birds survived in the wild. Today, exact numbers are difficult to estimate, but it is believed that there are still less than 7,000 left. Kia are social birds and live in groups of up to 13. They usually breed in southern beech forests located on steep mountainsides. Nests are located on the ground, either in crevices in the rock or in burrows under tree roots. They lay two to five eggs, which hatch after 21 days. The young are then cared for for about 94 days. Mortality is high among young kia, with less than 40% of chicks surviving their first year. The New Zealand kaka has the scientific name Nesta meridionalis. The species name means southern. Like the kia and kakapo, the kaka is generally only known by its Māori name. Kaka is the Māori word for parrot, and is believed to have been used because it sounds like the kaka's screeching. This is a large parrot found on the three main islands throughout New Zealand, the North Island, the South Island and Stewart Island, as well as several smaller offshore islands. It is an olive brown colour with reddish underparts and a greyish white crown. There are two subspecies of kaka. The creatively named North Island kaka is only found on parts of the North Island and its surrounding offshore islands, while the South Island kaka is found on parts of the South Island, Stewart Island and the surrounding offshore islands. They are forest birds and more arboreal than the kea. Their diet largely consists of fruit and seeds from their trees, along with sap and nectar. Unusually for a parrot, they will sometimes use their beak to pry up bark and eat invertebrates found living on trees as well. Kaka are classified as vulnerable by the IUCN, and it is estimated that there is less than 10,000 individuals in the wild. This does make them both more common and more widespread than the kea and kakapo, but conservation efforts still focus on ensuring their numbers don't drop any lower. Forest clearance means that only a fraction of its former habitat survives, and the introduction of mammalian pests has devastated nesting populations on the main islands. Stoats are considered the worst threat to kaka. It is possible that they could coexist with the other mammalian predators that so many of New Zealand's native birds struggle with. The kaka thrives on forested offshore islands where these pests have been removed, such as Kapiti Island. Interestingly, the presence of mammals seems to have affected kaka nesting behaviour. Where the pests are present, kaka only make their nests high in trees, rarely below 5 metres above the ground. However, on offshore islands there seems to be no such restriction. Kaka nests have been found at ground level as well as higher. There appears to be no preference. Kaka nest in tree cavities. They typically lay 4 eggs, although it can be as many as 8. They usually only have one clutch a year, but in a year with a lot of fruit they can have a second clutch. If this happens, then they will use the same hollow in the tree both times. The female incubates the eggs for 24 days, and only she will care for the newly hatched chicks. However, the male does bring the female food throughout the breeding season. Both parents will feed the chicks after they have fledged. Interestingly, although generally uncommon on both the North and South Islands, kaka have been returning to New Zealand's capital city, Wellington. This is largely due to Zealandia, a large eco-sanctuary neighbouring the city where mammalian predators cannot enter due to a predator-proof fence. This has given kaka a safe place to nest, while the adults are free to forage in the wider city, drastically increasing kaka numbers in Wellington. This seems to strongly suggest that it is mammalian predators that are suppressing kaka numbers on mainland New Zealand. There were two other species of kaka that inhabited Oceania but went extinct after humans arrived. The earliest of these was the Chatham kaka, Nestor chathamensis, which is believed to have gone extinct around 1550 BCE, less than 150 years after the arrival of the first Polynesian settlers. This was long before any European settlers arrived, and it was probably hunted to extinction. It was only found on the Chatham Islands, and it was similar in size to the New Zealand kaka, and they probably looked similar, aside from their beak. Its beak was longer than that of the kaka, but shorter than the kia's. The coloration of its plumage is unknown. It had relatively large thigh bones and a broad pelvis compared to the modern day kaka. These suggest that it was a poor flyer, making it easy prey for the humans and invasive mammals that settled on the Chatham Islands. Little is known about the ecology or behaviour of the Chatham kaka, but some details can be inferred from our knowledge of the environment and their closest living relatives. They likely lived mostly in the forests which covered the Chatham Islands at the time. Like their living relatives, they probably ate seeds and fruits, and possibly nectar or invertebrates. 
The other was the Norfolk Kaka, or Nesta Productus. The scientific name comes from the Latin verb to bring forward. From what I could discover, this name seems to be given because of how pronounced the bird's beak was. Its upper mandible extended 1.5 times over the lower mandible, creating a very large hooked beak. They lived on Norfolk Island and the neighbouring Phillips Island. Since these islands are territories of Australia, they are the only bird in this family known to have lived outside of New Zealand. The last known individual died in captivity in London sometime after 1851. Although the exact date is unknown, it is believed that it was likely extinct in the wild by the late 1830s. Since this extinction is relatively recent, taxidermied specimens can be found in several museums around the world. It was believed to have been hunted by the first Polynesian settlers, and then later to extinction by the European settlers during the 19th century. Since there are taxidermied specimens, these along with paintings from people who saw them, give us a good idea of what the Norfolk kaka looked like. Aside from their larger bill, they looked a lot like the New Zealand kaka. Their back and crown were a similar olive brown colour. However, their most distinctive feature was their dark orange underparts, neck and face, along with a pale yellowish orange chest. It is smaller than any of their known relatives, however, averaging about 38 centimetres or 15 inches long. Although not much is known about their behaviours, it is believed that they lived both on the ground and in tall trees, feeding on flowering shrubs and trees, much like their relatives. Their call was described by John Gold, the man who described them to science as a hoarse, quacking, inharmonious noise, sometimes resembling the barking of a dog. There are two more genera in Strigopidae, both of which are entirely extinct. We have already covered the only three living members of this family, the Kakapo, the Kea and the Kaka. The remaining genera are prehistoric, but are still included in this family, so we will cover them briefly. Since they are prehistoric, much less is known about them. The first of these is the genus Nelopsiticus. This has four known species, although one of these is yet to be named. These species are all estimated to have lived about 16 to 19 million years ago, with their fossils found in the same formation in Otago in southern New Zealand. This genus is named after Neleus, who in Greek mythology was the father of Nestor, reflecting the relationship between the two genera. The little St. Bathans parrot was the first species named in this genus, but it is also the smallest. Its common name comes from the fossil formation where it was found, while its scientific name, Nelopsiticus minimus, refers to its small size. Merton's parrot was the next species described, and is also the second smallest of the four. Its scientific name is Nelopsiticus Don Mertoni, and both its common and scientific names were given to honour Don Merton, a New Zealand conservationist credited with being instrumental in saving the kakapo from extinction. Interestingly, their build bears more similarity to that of the kakapo instead of any of the members of Nestor. Lee's parrot is the last of the named species in this genus, and it is also the largest of the first three. Its scientific name is Nelopsiticus Daphne Lee, and both it and the common name were given in honour of Daphne Lee, a geologist who greatly contributed to the knowledge of Miocene terrestrial ecosystems in New Zealand. It is only tentatively included in this genus, as it was described from only six bones, making it hard to be assured of its placement in a phylogenetic tree. Finally, the last parrot in this group has not yet been formally described, and so does not even have a scientific name. It is the largest of the parrots assigned to this genus, being estimated as a similar size as the Kia. However, only its left scapula and humerus have been found so far, so, like Lee's parrot, it is impossible to be sure whether it belongs in this genus. The last genus in the family Strigopidae is Heracles, and it only has one species, the Hercules parrot. This keeps up the tradition of naming genera in this family after Greek heroes. Heracles, or Hercules in Latin, killed Neleus and all of his sons, only sparing Nestor. This nicely mirrors the other genera we've talked about today, with Nestor being the only one of the three with living species. The Hercules parrot was only recently discovered, having been officially named in 2019. It was described from only two bones. Its scientific name is Heracles inexpectatus, likely referring to its unexpected size. It is estimated that it stood just under 1 metre, or 3.2 feet tall, making it the largest parrot known to have lived. The hyacinth parrot, the largest parrot alive today, is also around 1 metre long, but most of that is its tail. The Hercules parrot was flightless due to its large size, so it possibly shared some similarities with the kakapo. Since it was found in the same fossil formation as the Nelopsiticus species, it lived at the same time as them, around 16 to 19 million years ago. As with some of the other prehistoric species we have discussed today, there are some doubts about where Heracles fits on a phylogenetic tree. 
I've tentatively included it alongside Nestor and Nalipsiticus, but it is possible it could be a separate branch, being more distantly related from them. There is not enough fossil evidence to be certain either way. Thank you for listening everyone, and I hope you learned something about this fascinating group of parrots. Feel free to suggest another group of animals you want to see me cover in the comments, and I will see you next time.